Well, then, Chris, a final game of the season on Sunday and a, a chance to draw a line under what's been a pretty miserable season, really. Um, yeah, it has been miserable, but we've got to got to move forward and, and look forward and not dwell on the past. That the past is is gone and we're relegated and, and we're looking forward to next season. So um, yeah, it'd be good to good to get this game played and, and enjoy the game. And it's uh, against MK Dons who pushing for promotion with one game to go and. They're going to be fighting for everything, aren't they? It's not going to be an easy game at all. No, no, you would rather have that than, than, a, than a no contest of a game and nothing's, nothing's riding on the game. So you would rather have that as a, as a player going into the last game um, because you need to be on your metal and, and it's an attractive, good, good fixture to play in. So. And they've, they've played some great football. They've scored a lot of goals as well. So it's going to be a tough task to defend that goal. Yeah, it, it'll be good because um, I've played a few times at MK and they, they do play good football and an attacking football and... Um, create a lot of chances and it's always a good good place to play because it's a good atmosphere and a, a good pitch and, and they have a, a largest crowd and there should be a large crowd there on Sunday so hey, it's a great game to be playing in, hopefully. Um, the overall players, certain ones might be out of contract or potentially leaving at the end of the season, a lot of the team going to be fighting for contracts next season? Um, yeah but I think in professional football every, every game is important to fight for irrespective of whether you're in, in contract, out of contract, whether it's the first game, 46th game of the season, it shouldn't really matter. Every game you're competing against your fellow professionals and you want to you do as well as, as you can do, irrespective of whether you're in contract, out of contract, and whether it's the last or the first game of the season. Since Paul Stark's come in, you've seen some improvement in performances, notably against Sheffield United and, and Swindon. How have you found working under Stark since he's been here? Good. Um, he's changed a, changed a few things around, and I've really enjoyed it. And um, he's a very experienced manager, and, and very astute, and very aware of, of the game. And his knowledge is, is very, very good. So I've been very, very impressed so far. Because from our side of things, he's quite quietly spoken. He doesn't really give a lot away, does he? No, I think um, some of the best managers do that. Uh, Nigel Pearson at Leicester, when I was when I worked under him, he was very similar. He never gave away much, um, especially to the press, and I think it's a it's a good good trait to have. And pushing on next season, um, you expect you over to be competitive at the top of the table. Yeah, um, definitely. It's his in terms of his CV, um, the manager is it's great. It's his promotion chasing. He's got a lot of lot of teams promoted, and obviously that's what we'll be looking to do. Um, and I think it's it's a great um, acquisition from the club. Um, because of his CV and his knowledge of the game. What about yourself? You've got another year on your contract. Are you happy to stay here and, and fight in League Two? Uh, I'm contracted to, to Yeovil Town, so um, I'm really, really looking forward to it because I haven't played at many games this year, and um, will be an injury or, or, or whatever. And um, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm very excited about playing, and I'm a Yeovil Town player for, for another year. So yeah, um, hopefully, I'll get as many opportunities as I can do to play, and I'm just because uh, the season hasn't been great for me, I'm really looking forward to next season. You mentioned not playing as much as you'd like, you've had a few injuries as well. How are you feeling at the moment within yourself? Yeah, great. All, all I'm concerned about is trying to play as many minutes as I can do this season because it's been a, a hard, difficult time in terms of being injured because my, I broke my foot in three places and the bone wasn't healing and it was, I was coming back and it wasn't ready and then I was coming back again and it wasn't ready. And, very frustrating time and just to be able to be out there on the pitch is just brilliant for me. Um, it's a privilege to be out there at the moment so all I want to do is, is try to rack up the minutes as much as I can do to then move forward into next season. And just finally, let's talk about the fans here at Hewish Park. I mean, even though you finished bottom of the table, you've dropped down into League Two, they, they've stuck behind you all the way through the season, haven't they? Yeah, without a doubt, they've been fantastic. The fans um, are the most important people at, the, at a football club and and people come and go, managers come and go, players come and go, and it's always the fans that, that stay. So, and they are the most important people at the football club, and, and people sometimes don't appreciate that or, or realise that, and which they are. And I think I was thinking 12 years ago, we were in the, in the conference as, as, say, I was in, in the youth team, and part, part player, part fan being in the youth team. And if you'd say 13, 12, 13 years later, you would have gone three promotions into the championship, come back down into League Two. I think the majority of people would have would have taken that, and it's been obviously a roller coaster for them, uh, mentally as, as well. A lot of excitement and a lot of disheartenment. But um, I think the majority of fans, if you asked them, would have would have would have bit your hand off for, for 12 years of of highs and lows. 
I mean, you mentioned about coming down. Sometimes, I mean, if you look at teams, for example, just up the road, Bristol City, they've had to drop down into League One and kind of rebuild themselves and, and be in a better position to go back up to the Championship. And maybe Yeovil are in that position now, drop into League Two, rebuild, and, and hopefully push back up into League One again. Yeah, without the majority of football clubs, this happens. Uh, Manchester United, the Chelsea's, the Liverpool's, obviously it doesn't happen because they've got the financial backing and they very rarely get, get relegated. Um, but the majority of football clubs and the majority of football fans will have experienced relegations, would have experienced promotions. Yeovil being a relatively new football league side have probably haven't really experienced that throughout the, the, the career of Yeovil Town in terms of the longevity. But the majority of football fans in general would have experienced highs, would have experienced lows. I can't imagine many teams have never been relegated and never been promoted. So. Um, yeah, it's just being part of the Football League, you're going to experience these things. Okay, Chris, thank you. Great, cheers. Uh, the new manager has obviously you've made a few changes, trying to look at everyone, and he's played both you and Arta. Does it feel like you're, you're playing to impress him at the moment? Um, yeah and no, because obviously of my injury, all I'm concerned about is trying to play as many minutes as I can do, and it's up to him whether he's impressed or not. But I'm more concerned about trying to play as many minutes as I can do, and, and prove to myself that I'm fully fit and my foot's okay and, um, and I enjoy playing football. If he likes what he sees, he likes what he sees, but I'm not overly concerned about trying to impress other people because then problems happen and, and you start overthinking things and, and you don't play as well as you'd like to. So um, Obviously, whenever you play, you, you need to impress whoever's the manager and you need to impress whoever's watching, but first of all, you want to try and impress yourself and then make sure yourself all right. And there's likely to be that competition next season as well for the number one spot. Um, what effect does that have on you as a player? Um, good, good. I mean, at times you would, you do want to know whether you're, you're number one or number two because then you can get your head around it and you can you can help each other and work out who's who's starting and who's not. But then it's also great to have the competition. At every football club I've been at in my career, I've always had competition and it's been great. Uh, to get the best out of you, you need to have that. Otherwise, you... Um, you probably become complacent and you don't perform as well as you could do. So um, he's brilliant, Arta. Um, both on the pitch, I've been very impressed with him. His attributes are, are very, very good, and he's got every chance of, of playing a lot higher. Um, also, his attitude-wise, in terms of training and his professionalism, is outstanding. So it's really great to have someone very similar to yourself in terms of attitude um, to, to work with on a daily basis. And the manager's confirmed now, of course, that Gareth Stewart's left the club. How has that affected you and the other goalkeepers? Um, yeah, great. It, I mean, you've got to get on with it. So he was a, he was a great a asset to have, Gareth, and, and I thank him a lot for what he's done. And He was very good to me and very good to Arta, but in difficult circumstances, because under the previous manager, he was obviously various thing, loan players, goalkeepers came in and, and whatever, and it was difficult for him, but he, he was great. Um, but moving forward, he's now gone and, and us two, at the moment, have to just do it ourselves. And we're working really well together and it's working great, uh, really well, um, because we're pushing each other and, and coming up with ideas and, and working out what, what, what he likes and what I like. And sometimes when you've got a coach, they do what they want to do rather than what suits it to that goalkeeper. So it's working great at the moment. Is that something you're thinking about maybe in the future, goalkeeping coach? <laughs> I'm not. I mean, obviously, I'm... 33, I've still got a lot more years, hopefully, to play, but obviously, as you get when you get past 30, you need to start thinking of what you're going to do after your football's finished. So that is something I would be looking at, and I think I'd be very good at. It's just um, uh, the right time. When is the right time to do it? Cheers, Chris. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers.